When the ancients looked into the night sky, they thought the heavens revolved around the Earth and mankind. Over the centuries, this view has changed radically. We discovered we lived on a planet orbiting a star within a solar system, and this solar system was found to be part of the Milky Way galaxy. Later, we learned that our universe was filled with billions of other such galaxies. But could it be that we're committing the same error as our ancestors by thinking the universe contains everything there is? Could it be that we live in a multiverse? The word multiverse refers to the general idea that our universe might not be unique. There might be many, many universes. And there are a number of different ways of thinking about multiverses. Now, this idea of a multiverse is not gratuitous um, speculation. No, it, it really comes out of both experiment or observational physics about the universe and the current theories as best we understand them. There are a number of different theories about what the multiverse could be. One proponent of the idea of the multiverse is Max Tegmark of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Dr. Tegmark suggests a fourfold classification of possible types of multiverse. The first type of multiverse is just an extension of what we already know, our universe expanding into infinity rather than ending at the limits of our vision. When we astrophysicists talk about our universe, we don't mean everything that exists. We mean this. We mean the spherical region of space from which light has had time to reach us so far. Because no matter how good telescopes we build, if there's a galaxy out here, light from it just hasn't reached us yet. We have no access to it. We can look back almost to the beginning of time, shortly after the Big Bang, some 13.8 billion years ago, to the edge of the observable universe. But we can see no further. So the space beyond that distance, known as the Hubble radius, is literally out of sight. But that doesn't mean there isn't anything there. You've got every reason to think that our universe goes on far beyond what we can see, that there are many galaxies which are unobservable because they're so far away. And indeed, many people think that uh, the universe extends far, far beyond what we can see, maybe billions of times further. Because the expansion of the universe has stretched space, astronomers are able to see out to a distance of about 42 billion light years. How far things extend beyond this is unknown, but may not be unknowable. And if they stretch to infinity, as some theories suggest, there could be numerous isolated universes, cut off from one another by their own Hubble radius, depending on the observer's vantage point. I don't have a single colleague in science who thinks that space actually ends here at the edge of our universe. The, the, where it starts getting more controversial is when you ask, well, how much more space is there? To understand the second type of multiverse in Dr. Tegmark's system, it is first necessary to understand how the universe was formed and the theory of inflation. It was first conceived of by Alan Guth in 1979, and then later refined and expanded upon by Andre Lind, who had some key insights. So in inflation is a, a twist on the classic Big Bang theory. Uh, it's really an answer to the question of what is it that propelled the Big Bang. That initially the universe was in kind of energetic vacuum-like state. The universe expanded uh, nearly exponentially fast. And during one trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second, it have grown up to the size much larger than the size of the part of the universe which we are capable of seeing right now. The thinking is that inflation may not have stopped at the same time everywhere. So we live in a universe that was spawned by one area of inflation, but bubble universes, or pocket universes, could have continued to form elsewhere. We, we don't know much about how inflation started, and we don't know if it started only once or many times. Perhaps it started many times. But even if it only started once, uh, that's enough to create uh, an infinite number of these pocket universes. Because once the inflation goes, a pocket universe forms here, a pocket universe forms there, and just goes on forever. And as a result, the universe becomes a self-reproducing, eternally growing fractal. What these universes could be like is a mystery, but it is conceivable that the laws of physics within them would be totally different from our own. They may not allow gravity to exist, they may not allow a periodic table of elements, they may not allow stars to be stable for long enough, etc. This is one of the ideas of string theory, which attempts to unify general relativity with quantum mechanics. The thinking is that all of the solutions produced by string theory that don't match up with what we can see in our own universe may actually represent reality in other universes. So, the basic idea of the multiverse is that the different solutions of string theory control the environment in these different regions very far away. So, if we are in a multiverse, 
where the different constituents are governed by different physical laws, then we have to introduce a concept called anthropic selection. The idea that we are not in a typical universe, because most of them will be sterile or stillborn, because the laws governing them won't allow complexity to emerge. The anthropic principle is the idea that our universe is fine-tuned to allow humans to live. A small fiddle with the strength of gravity, for example, and life as we know it would not exist. A coincidence that does not sit easily with scientists. The concept of a multiverse neatly addresses this problem. Within the infinite number of universes that could exist, we are simply living in the one we are able to. In the third type of Tegmark multiverse, as in the first, the laws of physics are the same from one to another. In this type, though, the component universes are separated not by distance, but by time. At every moment within such a multiverse, all of the possible futures allowed by the uncertainties of quantum mechanics actually happen. Uh, quantum mechanics is not a predictive theory, it's a probabilistic theory. So it says, for example, if a photon uh, goes through a polarizer at 45 degrees to the angle of polarization, it just has a 50-50 chance of going through or not, and there's no way of knowing. Uh, one interpretation of quantum mechanics, which I think makes a lot of sense, says that when the photon hits the polarizer at 45 degrees, uh, there's actually two futures that happen. One where it goes through the polarizer and one where it doesn't, and each future continues uh, uh, as if the other future were not there. In the many worlds theory of the multiverse, the entirety of the universe acts like the quantum photon, but instead of having two potential future states, every possible outcome would be manifested. So our entire universe, and everything within it, including you, would be constantly undergoing multiple fissions into daughter universes, each with its own reality and future. Any given observer, though, would only see one outcome. In the final classification, the Level 4 multiverse, Dr. Tegmark proposes that all coherent mathematical systems describe a physical reality of some sort. Those different systems are, of necessity, different universes. What this last idea translates to in practice is hard to conceive of. It is more the province of metaphysics than physics. But the other three types of multiverse, though they push the bounds of physical theory, do not overstep them. Observational data supporting the theory of inflation have convinced some scientists that a multiverse is possible. But the idea is still controversial. I, I think the jury is still out on whether there's a multiverse. Uh, it's odd that some people get very emotional. Some people are very hostile to the idea. Um, because they don't feel we should talk about um, entities that we can't directly observe. I think we've got to be open-minded because we have good theories which predict that the multiverse must exist. And I hope that we can settle this. I think it's an empirical question. Uh, although the idea that there are other universes, uh, I regard as a very uh, reasonable speculation of modern cosmology. Taking a step back, I mean, it's proven very difficult, surprisingly hard, to come up with a theory of physics that predicts only what we see and predicts that there's nothing else. It may be impossible to ever directly observe the multiverse, but some scientists hope to eventually gather enough data supporting the theories that predict it to one day confirm its existence. If that were to happen, like the ancients before us, we would be given a whole new perspective on how the cosmos works and on our place in it. <laughs>